um, to the end um, after item 12. Uh, also, because we do have some people that are here this evening to present uh, proposals on uh, some educational trips um, that would eventually need board approval, I would, those people would like it if items 12K and 12L uh, could be moved um, to take place um, uh, right, after, right before communications. Okay. Um, what we will um, review very quickly um, under communications, um, the board had uh, its organizational meeting um, for the next year and um, has made uh, specific committee assignments and so on, and I'll review those very quickly under communications. Uh, board, it's called board appointments, I guess. Any other changes to the agenda? Yes. Um, Susan Dana is here too, and she's going to be part of my report, but it might fit under communications too. She wants to report on the national Spanish and French exams that the middle school students took. Okay. Would that be okay, Susan, if you came earlier? We can do that, Susan. Um, so why don't we put that as C under communications. Okay. Um, <clears throat> in the packet were the May school board uh, minutes. Were there any adjustments? So those would be approved. And I don't see our high school representatives or middle school representatives unless they're hiding in the back there. No. With finals uh, starting tomorrow, <laughs> they have asked for permission to study. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's fine. That's good. Um, so we are going to move to communications, and um, I think uh, Tom wanted to cover a letter from a citizen. Uh, yes. Um, I included in your packet a letter from a, a, a citizen regarding the senior transition project. Um, it, and again, this is the second year of, of that program, and it's nice when you do get those people who do appreciate that effort. And this person actually kept a, um, a portfolio and took pictures of, of the kids, um, the work, and, and at, sent it to, um, I think I sent a copy to the town manager also. Mm -hmm. Um, and the other, only other thing under that I had was the reflections, and that's moved to the end. Okay. Um, board appointments for the 2001-2002 school year. Um, vice chairman of the board is uh, Jim Rowe. Uh, chairman uh, is me. Um, I'm go through the, uh, the major committees um, and assignments. Uh, our standing subcommittees, the finance subcommittee, uh, chair, um, Kevin will continue that uh, position. Uh, the policy subcommittee, Jennifer, will continue uh, to chair that um, uh, committee. And uh, the planning committee, uh, Marie, will continue to chair also. It's kind of a nice, um, you know, we've switched around some of the names, but for the most part, um, everyone is uh, continuing an active involvement. Um, with some of our newer uh, board members assuming some leadership responsibility uh, in areas uh, like athletic um, advisory, um, co-curricular, uh, community coalition, future direction planning, and so on. So I won't go through all of those, uh, but we did have our, uh, finalize our appointments this evening. And now we'll move to um, Consideration of a request regarding a student trip to Europe in April 2002. And as far as the process, and I know there are people here to discuss this, um, at this meeting, um, there are two different kinds of trips. Um, in a school trip that is, that is part of our school curriculum, and it's anything that leaves the state, needs your approval. If it's a non-school trip, the request would be for the time 
that the students might be missing from school and, and the person taking them on the trip. So you have both of those types this evening. And these actually will come before the board for, um, for a vote in September is what my understanding is. And it's really, at this point, we'll sort of poll the board for um, uh, their uh, general sense of uh, moving ahead in terms of the that would, details of the That would be helpful uh, because they do need to make uh, some commitments, but what we've done in the past that's worked very well is to have that sense of the board and then come back to you with an update in the, early in the fall to, uh, to uh, report where things stand. Uh, I think first I'd like to call Mark Pendarvis and David Perry to the stand. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, Mark and David are both uh, presenting a, uh, the, the full exchange type of program, one in French, one in Spanish, uh, very similar to uh, the trip that we had, uh, not this school year, but last school year, uh, which was a French exchange. And that, again, is a full exchange involving their students coming here and our students staying with their families there. So I'll turn it over to David and Mark. Hi. You've Hi, been David. sworn in. <laughs> <laughs> I've been sworn at quite a bit. Thank you. Um, David Peary, French teacher at the high school. Um, nice to see you again. I was here uh, last year giving the reports of our trip. Um, it's a three-week exchange that takes place with, with the Lycée Aristide Briand, which is in Saint-Nazaire in France, it's on the Atlantic coast, just at the mouth of the Loire River. It's a three-week exchange. We go there with a group of 10 to 12 students. That 12 is the maximum we can take. Um, we spend a couple of days in Paris doing the monuments, uh, getting jet lag, eating pastries, and then we go and live with French families for two and a half weeks uh, where we go to school with our counterparts every day and do various cultural experiences um, in the area, seeing things like 5,000-year-old megaliths that are in the countryside, uh, visiting submarine bases, um, doing all sorts of uh, different things and living with the family and learning what it is to live in a different culture. Um, we learn tolerance and respect and we learn what our limits are and we learn some assertiveness too. We grow up a lot over those three weeks. Um, then we come back, uh, recover from our trip and host the French students when they come back to see us. I'm assuming that we're going in February and they're coming back in April, though we haven't established that timetable exactly. Um, they prefer coming here in April as opposed to coming in February, though I tell them there are wonderful things to do in February, they smile at me and nod and said, yeah, we're sure. <laughs> I'm sure there are wonderful things to do in February. Um, <clears throat> then they come back and spend three weeks with us. Uh, the organization we're traveling with this year, both uh, the group that I'm hoping to take over and the group that Mark is going to be hopefully taking over is through council exchanges. Um, we, last year we went through the National Association of Secondary School Principals. They have decided to get out of the uh, travel business and they have handed all their accounts over to, over to council exchanges. Council exchanges, if you want to go back in the history of it, originally was the travel wing of the National Association of Secondary School Principals, and they thought in the late 80s that they could make a go of this privately because they're doing so smashingly well. Um, and so now they have their accounts back. Back when we started our exchanges at the high school with the city of Orange in southern France in the uh, 70s, we went through council exchanges. And when we had our exchange with the Lycée Saint-Cloud in Paris, we went through council exchanges. So we're just getting back to an organization that um, this community has a long history of working with. That's my two cents. Any questions any on the French trip? Questions or comments for David? Um, yes, who would, who is eligible? Um, traditionally, we have taken sophomores and up in third year language and up, with priority being given to seniors who are in upper level languages, because they won't have a chance to go again, where sophomores would have a chance to um, go again. Um, but you have to be studying the language. You have to be currently enrolled in that language to go on the trip. David, is this trip a little longer than last year's? It's about, the, it's, again, it's always been three weeks. Last year was three weeks, and, and this would probably be about three weeks. And Jennifer, do you want to ask your chaperone tr yeah, well, question? Wait. That's a given. <laughs> <laughs> or should we wait until uh, you hear both, both I options? I can't speak French. <laughs> <laughs> I can go to Germany and I can Thanks, Mark? David. Okay. Mark Pendarvis, Spanish teacher at the high school. Um, 
my plan trip is with the same organization that uh, David's with, and I'm glad he gave you the uh, prelude here because I had no idea the history of the organization. Um, but it's a very reliable organization from what I've heard. And what I would like to do is try to work this into you know, part of the curriculum as well, uh, to have a trip like that available for the kids to Costa Rica. Um, there's a school right now that I'm in the process of working with on the Upper Peninsula, Northwest Peninsula of Costa Rica. The way that they work their school year there would be the students would come here in December, from the beginning of December till about the time we leave for vacation, then they'd be gone, and then our kids could go down there in February, um, using part of that February vacation as a time for our kids to go down there. Um, and the same eligibility um, for who gets to go and the same numbers, um, we'd like to keep that compatible with the French trip, you know, so that they have that likeness to them. And right now it's all in the planning stages, so if you have any questions. I'm surprised from Costa Rica they will come here in December and the mm. French one. Yeah, I was surprised that too, but <laughs> that's the way they work it. Yeah. Okay, um, uh, my sense is the board hasn't changed a whole lot, and um, my sense is that, that um, you know, I'll, I'll look for the nodding of heads, but I suspect that what we'd like you to do is to, to, is to move ahead, and um, is that correct? Mm -hmm. and, um, and proceed with the planning, and then we'll talk with you again in September. The nice thing is also, um, this is what when we sort of make you promise to um, bring some of the students back and, and, and tell us about the experience. And uh, that happened. It was very, very nice to, uh, to hear from them. So uh, that, I guess that same part of the deal holds. So uh, proceed with the planning, and we'll hear about the details um, in a couple of months. Great. Thanks. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Uh, I'll ask Nancy Murphy to... Uh, come up and, and this is the trip that is not uh, a school related or, or curriculum related uh, trip but we are here to receive permission uh, for students to students to miss a day of school for the trip and for uh, Nancy and potentially one or two other uh, depending on the size uh, faculty chaperones to uh, to miss a day and this, this also, Pete, will, will come forward to us in the fall? Yes. Okay, for formal approval. Right. right. Okay. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to start uh, some preliminary meetings with the students, and I have passed out the word that we were pursuing your approval for such a trip. As with the, we had a great success with our trip to Italy this past April, and ended up having to leave, as a matter of fact, two days before the spring break began. But um, hopefully that won't happen again this year. And we would just like to leave probably Thursday evening before the April break and go to, it, to uh, London and Paris for a total of nine days, two days of which would be travel time and seven days would be some high-speed touring of uh, Versailles and Paris and parts and different places in London and such. So i um, just like to ask for your approval of, of such a trip and I'll take any questions that you might have. We are going, by the way, through the same organization that we went with um, this past April. Mm -hmm. um, highly reputable and very, very reliable. Um, and I, I guess I would, would, would like to add that I was so pleased with the way the Cape Kids acted on this trip. I mean, they just, they just did me proud. and. Uh, you know, they were exhausted, but they just pressed on, and their behavior was, was excellent. I never had to worry about them. Mm. But. And were, um, questions from anyone? I just had a question. Were there more, uh, when it was planned before, were there more than could be accommodated on the trip? No. More interested? Than no. no. And I think there may be more interested this year because word has gotten out yeah. about the success of our first trip. Mm -hmm. Thus far, even with just a preliminary spring meeting that I had last week, I've about 15 kids have expressed an interest. Um, um, don't know what the commitment will be. I think I would probably advertise it in the uh, fall newsletter and would expect, I would like to have about 18 students. Mm -hmm. That would be, um, allow me to have three chaperones, including myself, you know, one for every six students. And mm -hmm. That's a good sized group to work with. Mm -hmm. um, just in your planning, we do have the Monday after April vacation off. Yeah. So that may help you. Yeah, the, you know there are uh, extensions you can get to these trips for an additional 
you know, three hundred dollars you can add on. Um, and I would, I would love to do that. One of my students who went with me this year wants to go to Australia. I said that. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm in a separate, uh, separate trip for for that in that part of the world, but um, that would be much too long. Yeah, yeah. It, and it does get expensive, so something to think about. Yeah. So, any and other you, questions or? Other questions? Mm -hmm. And I suspect the, the same would hold true to move ahead, do the planning, and um, um, unless I'm, I guess I'm right. And, um, and we'll look forward to hearing the details in the fall, and at that time, um, that, that's when the board would um, uh, provide a formal approval of, okay. of, the, uh, of the trip. Thank you. Thanks. So you can see while the theme this year has been civility and tolerance and respect. Next year, it's travel. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I guess, I guess we um, would invite you, Susan, to talk about the uh, the national world language exams and the results. Hi, I'm Susan Dana, a Spanish teacher at the uh, middle school. I just wanted to give you the results of the uh, national Spanish exam and the national French contest. I'm here as representing the whole world language team at the middle school. Um, the National Spanish Exam, for those of you who don't know, is an exam that's given by the American Association of Teachers of Spanish and Portuguese, which is a professional organization that we belong to. And um, students all around the country take this exam. And it's given in March every year. And each state picks the date. In Maine, it was given on March 1st this year. We picked 30 students to take the exam. Uh, usually, each school picks their top 10%. Um, very few schools have all their students do it. I think maybe Burke Academy does, maybe North Yarmouth Academy, but usually the schools that we're competing against just pick their top 10%. So the students that they're competing against are also very capable students. Um, the exam consists of 60 questions. 30 questions are listening. They listen to a tape. It's about a half hour tape, not one long 30 minute segment, but different segments. So 30 points are um, oral and 30 points are written. Um, but the results came back about two or three weeks ago. And for the first time this year, I'm just going to explain that the categorizing, um, Cape Elizabeth has been, in the past, we've been part of the regular category, which is students that normally start their study of the language in seventh or eighth grade. Um, I should also back up a little bit and say, usually it's high school students that take this exam around the country. There, I think right now, Falmouth Middle School took the exam, Waterville Junior High School, Cape middle school. I think those are the only three middle schools in the, in the state that took this exam, but otherwise it's all high school students. Probably at the level one exam, which is where our students are, there are about 900 students that took the exam. Um, 900? Pardon? 900, and, and just in the, in the state of Maine. Um, nationwide, I'm not sure I should know, but I don't have it it's in my packet over there. But um, this year we actually made, Cape Elizabeth Middle School made it to the national office because they have decided that we now are going to be considered outside experience category, which is a category students are placed in if they've had experience, for example, if they've lived abroad for three, two or three years with their parents, if they've been on an exchange program, an extensive exchange program, it wouldn't just be a three-week program such as what they're talking about, but if you'd lived in a foreign country for a year or so and came back, you're still, your, your parents are um, native speakers of English, you're American citizens, but you've had that outside experience. So um, we are outside experience this year. There's only one other school that had an outside experience student, and that was Waterville Junior High School. So it's kind of hard to see how we place this year being outside experience. But the students did very well. I did break it down. If we were in the regular category, how we would have placed. Um, we also do have some students that placed in the regular category, because these are students, this is starting to get complicated, students that moved into the system in sixth grade, and they picked up the study of the language when they were sixth graders. And the national office is considering um, our students outside experience if they start their language in, study their language in third grade. So we've, it's going to be a little bit more of a, a bookkeeping, a um, little more labor intensive for us to keep track of when students move into the system. But anyway, the results for the outside experience category, um, second place in Maine, Will Burnett and Christy Katzos. If they're, if they're two students, it means they had the same score on the exam. Um, third place in Maine in outside experience, Pat Doherty, Abby Greslick, and Allie Melsack. Fourth place in Maine, Chelsea Koch and Aaron Maloney. Fifth place in Maine, Daniel Beaumont. Sixth place in Maine, Kelly Skopinski. Seventh place in Maine, Melissa Tarbell. Eighth place in Maine, uh, three-way, four-way tie, Brenna Crane, Trisha Lyons, Anna Moyer, and Bethany Roy. Ninth place in Maine, Andy Marston, Corinne Earnshaw, and Jacob Metzger. And then the regular category, these are students who moved into our system in sixth grade. Travis Blair Glantz placed sixth in Maine, and Chase Dietrich placed eight in Maine. 
just going, I did break those down where those students would have placed if they'd been in the regular category as they have been for the past uh, eight or nine years. And we would have placed in, within the top 10, we would have had a first place, second place, third place, fourth place, fifth place, sixth place, eighth place, ninth place, and 10th place. So it really is fair. I talked about it with the students in the middle school. And it really, I think, is, is fair that we are now in this outside experience category. And it kind of raises the bar for us a little bit. The students were very disappointed that they didn't get first, because we would have been first if we were in the regular category. But, um, it, and I, we talked about it, it really is not fair. If, they, if they've started in fourth grade and they're competing against a student that just started in ninth grade, they really have an advantage. So um, I, I think it's going to be good for us, because it's really going to um, make it a little bit more challenging. In the French contest, they don't have such categories, so it's a little bit easier. But in the national French contest, we had five students take the exam this year, because um, it's eighth grade year are the students that opted out of um, Spanish. So they've only studied French for two years. Um, so for these students, Elizabeth Michaud plays first in the state of Maine, which is excellent, because she just started her study of French last year. And Catherine Cloutier plays 10th in the state of Maine. I think even though these students have just started their study of French, we're seeing that they have, having, they had studied Spanish in fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. They just have their, their brains are trained, I think, for the, uh, for the language acquisition. So um, we're very pleased with the results. That's I'd like terrific. to congratulate these students, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrific. Any comments? Questions? Thanks, Susan. Okay. Um, comments from the public, if any. We don't have that. Um, um, moving to recognition. Years of service for staff. At this time each year, um, the list of uh, teachers for years of service and staff members for years of uh, service in the educational community of Cape Elizabeth are read, and those people will be presented with um, recognition at the um, annual opening of school convocation uh, in late August. With five years um, of experience, uh, Connie Dean, food services, Mark Doty, custodian, Antoinette Harriman, Food Service, Hannah Jones, high school teacher, Diane Joyce, Food Service, Claire Labrie, Director of Special Services, Joanne Lee, Teacher at Middle School, Nancy Murphy, Teacher at the High School, Dick Pine, um, Bus Driver, Al Sawyer, Bus Driver, Doug Worthley, Teacher at the High School, Sandra Brown, Food Services, and Tina Brown, Food Services. With 10 years of service, Bill Brewington, teacher at the high school, Susan Dana, teacher at the middle school, Gigi Field, teacher at Pond Cove, Linda Paul, teacher at Pond Cove, Susan Richmond, teacher at the high school, Janice Robinson, food service, Ann Valente, teacher at Pond Cove, and Sarah Berman, guidance counselor, Pond Cove. With 15 years of service, Karen Allen, community services, Barbara Cummings, secretary, Rindy Martin, Teacher Pond Cove, Julie Mullen, Teacher Pond Cove, Ingrid Stressinger, Teacher Pond Cove. 25 years of service, Dick Mullen, Teacher High School, and 30 years of service, Dorothy Anderson, Teacher Pond Cove, and Buddy Earl, Teacher at the Middle School. And those recognition uh, that will be given in August. Okay. Now, we also have. Um, tonight an opportunity to recognize two people, one of which who is in attendance. Um, we will be recognizing um, one administrator who is retiring, uh, Marla Bono, but she's not able to be here this evening because I understand her husband has had an operation, and so she is not here, but we do have a gift for her that will be presented at a later date. Um, the other person is um, Principal Pete Dawson, um, who, as we all know, will be leaving uh, to take a position in Israel, um, an inter international school. Um, but it's, it's uh, I, to me, just personally having, in my second year here, it's really, um, it's been an honor to be able to work with Pete and the contributions that I know you all know and are aware of that he's made to Cape Elizabeth High School are, are truly outstanding. So I really feel pretty good about awarding him this, this gift in, in, in recognition. So, so George, you want to join me?
<laughs> he said it's not a pigeon. <laughs> sure. Um, it's a little impromptu. Uh, Pete, uh, on behalf of, um, certainly on behalf of the board, on behalf of the school community, and on behalf of the community as a whole, um, want to express our deepest appreciation to you for all that you've contributed, which is significant. Um, the dedication that you've demonstrated, um, the, the depth of feeling and regard and respect um, for our students, um, I, we will certainly remember it and they will remember it. We've all grown from it and we wish you uh, the best of luck in your adventure. Um, I think if I could, I would like to save my thank yous for uh, my report, and I, I, I would like to thank several people and you among them, so okay. if I could. Uh, I'm sorry that can't be done, Pete. <laughs> you, you, have, you, you, have to, you have to thank people now. I would it's rare that Pete passes up an opportunity. <laughs> well, it's not a roast, Jennifer. <laughs> Bring that um, we're going we're, we're to move on to the. <laughs> we're going to move on to the superintendent's report. Um, the first item is just to um, uh, primarily put this on here to, to thank the school board for their participation um, in the professional development day on the 25th of May. Um, it's, it's a risk to, to have that kind of an activity at the end of the year where um, you're asking teachers to listen to a lot of reports. Um, but I was very happy with the outcome. Um, uh, I heard several comments um, how pleased the, the staff was to see the school board participating. Um, but I think it made for an overall um, good way to end our, our, our professional development activity and with the demonstration of some of the activities that took place during the year. Um, and as we began the year um, and we knew we were adding professional time to our calendar, it was very important for us to be able to, to demonstrate throughout the year, but also to commun <coughs> communicate to one another the kinds of things that are happening in professional development in our schools and the, the, the demonstrations in the gymnasium I think were outstanding and really gave you a pretty good picture of the kinds of things that were happening. It also was a good way to begin our work for next year. Um, I've had a very good response to sign up for different committees that are needed to do some of that work for the future direction plan, which just overall I think was a, was a great day, a great day for the staff. The next item um, under resignations, and we have a, a resig an, another um, issue where a teacher has um, had a change of heart in, in, in looking at to our benefit because we're very pleased with, with, with what's been happening, a rescission of a, of a resignation um, in, the, in the packet for, just for your information. Um, and under MEA results, I included that packet. Those just came out. I don't know how much time the principals have had to look at those, but they're less than a, a week old, but I wanted to get them to you before you read about them in the newspaper. Um, and I'm sure the principals will have a few comments about that, but they are very, very new. Uh, and they just got them in their hands a, a few days ago. Great. George, yes. can I just make a comment? Sure. Um, about the um, Professional Development Day. I've already had a conversation with Tom about this. And I didn't attend our last workshop meeting because I was out of town. So I was part of that workshop day, and I sat in a group and listened to the same presentations that were made to the board that week. Um, and for me, I felt that it was so much more beneficial um, for me personally to be part of the group of, say, amongst 20 other um, staff members to really hear what they were all talking about. And, and what the conversations were, you know, in, in groups on the floor um, and the questions that they had. And, I mean, if possible, 
I might suggest that the next time that we do something like that, to be part of it with the staff rather than a separate presentation to us. I, I thought it was fabulous. Mm. Um, and we can try to incorporate that into, um, you know, an opportunity like that, that that presents itself to us. So that's a that's a good suggestion. Um, we're going to move on to the principal's report, and uh, we'll start with Nancy, middle school. Good evening. Um, since Tom gave me this great segue about the MEA results and also a great explanation as to why it may not be in depth. Um, I have looked them over. Uh, we have sent them out to families, so they have received them. One of the things about the MEA results, and um, I was a person who worked in the beginning on MEAs and helped um, develop them, met some wonderful colleagues um, through that, um, one of them being, for instance, Beverly Bisbee, who then eventually ended up being my working colleague as well. So it, it's been wonderful in the conversations and um, things for professional development on those. My disappointment with the MEA process is that we get the results now. These students took these um, assessments in November, so they don't really give us a lot of informed information, um, things that we can build on for those individual students, but they do give us some program trends. Our program trend is right around that we are, we mostly meet the standard. We have some students and um, some things to be concerned about. But in part of our analysis that we'll do with Kim Sturgeon is to really look and see if we have any trends where um, we're seeing in, as we analyze any of the particular items or types of things that students are having more difficulty with. Is there a reason for that? Can we incorporate more of that type of performance assessment into our regular assessment? Not add another test, but just construct our own assessments in a little bit different way to make sure they're thinking deeply. For instance, a number of years ago, one of the trends that I noticed in doing an item analysis on MEA is that our students did things at a very well, but at a surface level. And so we did some work to make sure they went more in depth. It might be something like that that we'll pick up, but we have not had an opportunity to do that analysis yet. But that work does um, present itself for us to uh, work on for next year. So we'll certainly use those results for there. Our trend over the last few years is we're right around, right about the same place that we sort of hover right at that um, point of meeting the standards and in a pretty good place, but uh, we would like to get even better. Tonight gives me the opportunity really though to look back with you about some of the things that have happened in the middle school throughout the year. And as Susan Dana already shared with you, we certainly have enjoyed some success with our world language program, which is certainly one of our um, sort of outstanding programs. We have a lot of outstanding programs. It's outstanding because it's unusual. It's probably the program in our school that receives the most visitors throughout the year. And we have a number of uh, schools who come and visit us in the Northeast region, many in Maine, but not just in Maine, to get ideas about how you would do a world language program uh, for students in a continuous way, beginning at grade three, and for some of them even younger. So um, that is a, a really great thing to celebrate. We also this year, one of our goals was to be sure that we developed some more programs and things for some of our students that learned in different kinds of ways from um, other students. And our instructional support program, our student assistance team, still is one of our flag um, operations. Um, Carmen has led the SAT and that ISP program very, very well, and they are moving forward. And as you know, through the budget process, we'll be extending that to a full year program, the instructional support program next year for our students. When I talk with some of the students in that program, I know this is the program that has been geared to them and more matches some of their learning needs and learning styles. And it gives them a place to fit in with great dignity in the Cape Elizabeth Middle School. So it's a great program. Our ventures into assessment that I've talked about a number of times at our reports um, certainly have informed teaching and learning for us. Uh, we picked up things um, about clarity of directions. When we think we're really clear, we think we're very clear with a group of adults and then um, some young people show us that we weren't as clear as we thought. In doing assessment this way, we've really been able to focus in on some of those issues. We found some focus areas of study that we would like to um, refine so that 
students can even be more precise in their learning and fine-tuning some skills such as the graphing that the science teachers recently did with all of our students in grades five through eight. Another exciting area for us this year has been our application of technology. And that's not just the razzle-dazzle of now we can do it, but really watching students learn more deeply because they are using that. I think back to an observation I did in Matt Whaley's science class where the students were using our mobile lab. Those are the computers that come out that Gary has talked to you a lot about. Um, every, they were just beginning their introduction of plate tectonics. And on that particular day, all the students were turned to a website um, and they were trying to map and working on mapping um, earthquakes and volcanoes and then seeing the relationship between where those were and what they knew about the boundaries of the plates. And it was a great way to introduce that particular thing. Everybody could see it, they could do it, they could work at different paces, they could go to websites, they even shared which websites were better, more informative, easier to read, wonderful lifelong learning applications. I remember going into Claire Ramsbotham's language arts class and watching her do a PowerPoint presentation with her class on one of their books that they read in common, Wish Me Luck, and watching students take notes and think even more deeply from the notes they had taken together. They had all prepared PowerPoint displays, and it was really a great discussion, but at a very high level of comprehension. So that is something that's beyond the razzle-dazzle of some of those things. We have some students who, after school, applied for a special grant from the Toshiba company. They didn't win the grant, but they did a get, get a commendation, and it was great to see them so excited about that particular task, an idea that they have. We have some, some, some students who are still finishing up a videotaping project with a digital camera that they're working on to present to incoming students and have available in our guidance office so that when even students register in the summertime, they can click onto this website and find some things about the Cape Elizabeth Middle School. Um, and it's great because they are putting things on it that they think students really want to know. Our outdoor experience programs, another year of great success. And when we think of the culminating part of that, eighth graders giving back something to their community, our eighth graders had a wonderful experience working with some of the seniors with the land trust and clearing different trails and things within Cape Elizabeth. And it was done on afternoons. It worked in very well, didn't disrupt too many of the other programs that we were running. And that was a wonderful success and also a good connection with the high school. The eighth grade, too, as they get ready to leave the middle school, and we'll be recognizing them on Thursday night. Um, but the band went off to play for the legislature in March and received um, several letters of compliment for their work. Uh, yesterday, they went on a field trip to Augusta. And as several of them said to me, the museum was pretty good. Um, the state house was kind of interesting, and the bus trip was boring. So they probably, that, that, was, that was OK. Bus trips to Augusta can be kind of boring. I also remember uh, talking to Jim Murray after the Memorial Day parade, and he just wanted me to extend deep, deep compliments to our eighth graders who participated in readings, singing, playing in the band, doing taps. He said it was so impressive. And I think that's really good when you can reach out beyond your school and do something for other community members that really means something about your respect for your community and your respect for your country. So that was very good. We sometimes don't think of those things with young people today. The Music Man, another great success story for our drama um, production, and also learning from that about ways to maybe we've got big enough in our drama adventures, and now we need to figure out how to go more deeply in that and get a little bit more focus on that. This year, we welcome five new staff members to our staff, um, and we really tried to work on different kinds of induction procedures for them to make sure they had the support and the information that they needed uh, to have a successful year, and I think we have been quite successful in that. And they are very active um, staff members getting involved not only in school committees, but also in school-wide committees. It's been great fun this year um, meeting with Jill Bell about once a month. Jill is on a sabbatical and she's doing all these wonderful things. She wants to do video conferencing. And to do all of that, she and Gary Lenoy now have their own special language they talk about with these wire connections. And as I've said to you before, when I'm in the conversation with them for about 15 minutes, I just about understand it. But I'm not going to embarrass myself by pretending I understand it now. 
but I can tell you that one of the connections um, person to person that Jill has made is with some people at the New York Institute of Technology and there's a particular type of camera that we need to do some things next year. We don't have it in our budget so they're going to lend it to us and I certainly hope we don't drop it. <laughs> <laughs> the um, Middle School Parents Association has been a wonderful group of parents to work with us throughout the year, chaperones helping us with events, um, coming in and helping with science labs and other projects, and also this wonderful thing that they do for our staff, we call it a grazing event. Uh, once a month they provide food for the staff and um, the staff really appreciates that and that means a lot to them. So. Um, you always want to look for those signs, and that's always a good day to visit the middle school. One of the other things, too, as a, as a middle school, we're really into teaming, and teams mean a lot to us. And when we think of ourselves as a team, um, sometimes during good times, we can think of ourselves as a team, and it's really easy. This year, our particular staff has had several very serious illnesses that have had a tremendous impact on some of our staff members and continue to do that. And part of the test of a team is how do we support one another during those very difficult times and still get our job done. And my compliments to all my colleagues at the middle school, I think we have done that, we will continue to do that, but it speaks very well for who we are. I think that's about our celebration for the year. I've only taken, you know, moments of your time here. That's terrific, Nancy. Comments, questions? Peter's already making, you know, <laughs> as this is Peter's last time, I'm just going to let him have all the time he uh -huh. <laughs> Is, is um, Keith promising not to, to, to time him? I, I think we're letting, you know, Peter just have open mic tonight. That's it. Okay, we're going to move on then. In that event, we're going to move on to Pond Cove. Tom. Good evening. I, I agree with Nancy about the uh, MEA results arriving this time of year. It's nice to have them back, but June is not the time to be looking at these things in any depth and detail. We've uh, mailed them out, as the middle school has, to parents, and uh, the data has gone out to the fourth grade team, but we just haven't had a chance to look at it. From the results I've looked at, they're more or less the same for the numbers, but there are probably some interesting trends in the achieving, achievement patterns that we can tell you about in the fall. So I wanted to just to um, participate in what's becoming the annual ritual here, is look back on the year and reflect on some of the progress we made, I hope. Um, we don't like to tell Pond Cove kids who are just learning fractions that the, uh, the amazing fact that the whole can be greater than the sum of its parts because it interferes with their Chicago math work. But that, that's been the case this year and probably other years too. It just seems more obvious this year. We have had uh, a, a, just a very powerful blend of individual achievements, changes in classroom instruction, and our school-wide focus of the literacy inquiry has just kind of brought everything together. I also think the, the commitment on your part, and I know in each building, to take some time to acknowledge people's individual results has worked very well because people appreciate, you've heard people speak here, very sincerely saying, I accept this award and recognition on behalf of the whole staff. So that's been, that's been very positive. You may or may not remember that we started a process a couple of years ago through the Staff Development Committee of being on a cycle uh, where we meet in May, consider the work we've done, reflect on what we've learned, and make plans for the year. And this year, we formalized it a little more, and people privately listed what they had learned from our inquiry and how they had changed uh, practice that was for them. And then teams met to consider what they had done. And from what I heard, there was a nice match between the individual accomplishments and team goals. Um, that's important. Uh, one of the things they reported on was that we have 45 minutes a week of common planning time for each team. And they were able more this year to talk about issues of substance, curriculum, assessment and instruction, and considering all the demands on teachers' time during the day, I was just very impressed with that. That's a nice step up for us. On the other hand, as Nancy's mentioned, um, teaching derives a lot of its satisfaction from personal meaning. And we had at our last staff meeting, which was, I have to admit, really a party, the, the emphasis really was on the quality of the relations among all of us. Um, I'll get a little corny here. I was thinking of The Wizard of Oz. Uh, school needs brains, 
courage and heart. And I think Pond Cove and those two meetings, which are about two weeks apart, showed all that. At the next level, this is the way I think, um, we had school-wide initiatives continuing this year. Natchez mentioned the instructional support um, effort at the middle school, and our TAT, with the addition of that position for ins instructional support, has grown stronger as a team and also has more influence throughout the school and with parents. This has been the second year of looping. Um, we did a survey of the parents who have been in looping for two years and got almost 50 back. The, the, I've never seen results like this in my life for anything except, I, I can't imagine it. Uh, we had about 10 questions and when the concluding question was, I would recommend looping to other parents. 46 people replied, 40 people, 45 people agreed, one person was unsure. That's a, a pretty high standard. And the other questions had similar results. Even people who said it pro may not have worked out for them individually as families recognize that it's a good thing to do and they hope we can continue it. Um, one other thing, uh, tipping theory. You might be familiar with tipping theory. It emph emphasizes that little things can make a big difference in the long run. Small things we've done this year, the eight shortened days in 90 minutes times eight, having teachers voluntarily visit each other and observe and talk about what they were doing in class, having teachers do a voluntary study group about what you would consider a very dry book. All these, all these are little things, but when I look back on the year, these, I think these little things have tipped us forward into new territory and we're all very happy to be there. It's been a great year. That's great. Comments, questions for Tom? Yeah. I, I just have a comment. Um, congratulations on the looping um, thing, because I know that that was something that you really pushed. And we were waiting to hear, yep. you know, what would happen with it. And I don't know what all your questions were on the survey, but if 46 what? people <laughs> said that they would recommend it to yeah. other people, I think that's terrific. We, we even had a, had a, a parent's recommendation last year. She said it, it's really important to survey the people who dropped out. And those people are included in this. That's <laughs> mm. being so, I was just amazed, um, not just by the positive response, but by the commitment on the teacher's part and the parents to make this work. We still have some problems. I, I'm not sure that the classes are balanced and placement's always a difficulty at Pond Cove, but um, I think it's been, I think those eight teachers deserve a lot of credit. They, they did a great job. And, and we surveyed the teachers too. They are unanimous. They think it's great, even though there were issues of learning new curriculum, adapting to a new grade level. They would, if in the right circumstances, all do it again. And we will be doing it again? We can, but we get back to the, our commitment to have balanced classes. The way we do it now is people self-select to be in the looping pool and we have to determine whether that pool represents the grade level as a whole, and that's tricky. That, that's, that's been the, the trickiest thing to do, to make sure each class is balanced. But we have a plan that I will share with you another time when it's firmer, I think it'll work. Good. Thank you very much. Sure. It was very positive. And um, <laughs> <laughs> moving on to the high school, Pete. Does this go with the PowerPoint uh, presentation, Pete? Light reading? We can show it. A quiz, a quiz at the end of this? I'll be referring to this a little bit later. It's not immediate. Um, dealing with the reflections on the year. I, I will be talking about the survey that you have uh, or the survey summary that you have in your hands. But I would um, like to begin the reflections with the most immediate and then move back to uh, last summer. We've just gone through a uh, couple of weeks of, of intense activity uh, that I think has been extremely successful and very gratifying. The senior, watching the seniors uh, through senior transition project and then into the senior uh, the awards ceremony, the senior barbecue, the senior celebration, graduation and project graduation <clears throat> has been um, 
I think gratifying is the, is the best word uh, to use, and, and impressive would be a close second. They have, watching them grow, uh, especially when I look back to uh, uh, the four years ago when they came into the uh, building, has just been wonderful. And they have lived up to uh, high expectations, and each step of the way, they, they have shown uh, the ways that they've grown. <clears throat> I want to congratulate uh, Doug Worthley, who has been the class advisor uh, for the last three years, has found that, uh, that wonderful balance of giving students uh, support and guidance and then saying, okay, go ahead and take care of it, so that all of these activities that I mentioned were substantially planned by uh, various, various students in the class. The student speeches, um, encompassed a wide range of, uh, of students. Uh, they, they, their content was different, their uh, approach was different, they were funny, they were sad, they, they, uh, they were serious, and they were all wonderful. And uh, so this past uh, couple of weeks, as I say, was, was great, um, uh, culminating in graduation and project graduation. The parents that put all of the work into the planning of pro project graduation are to be thanked and congratulated. Um, it really was an experience for me of uh, being handed the script and following it uh, because all of the planning and work uh, had been done. And, and I'm, I'm going back again to the whole range of activities. Um, so to the I think we can feel very proud of the class of 2001, both the things that they have accomplished up to this point and the growth that they have achieved. And uh, as I've mentioned to them several times, I can't wait to see what they accomplish in the coming uh, years because I think it's going to be equally impressive on all levels, not just uh, uh, academic achievement or athletic achievement or anything like that, but in, in the ways that they are growing as human beings. I think we can feel very good about this class that uh, uh, has now left us and will be going out and taking its place. With that, let me return to last summer and. Uh, because I think that last summer was a good indication of how the year uh, was going to go from more from a, a faculty and professional development standpoint. We had an unprecedented uh, high, unprecedented high number uh, of faculty members eager to take advantage of various summer work uh, opportunities, summer work opportunities that were made possible by uh, gradually increasing the budget for professional development and, and uh, <clears throat> uh, learning results over the past couple of years. Uh, major themes uh, included curricular revision and unification, making sure that teachers who were teaching the same subjects and levels were uh, approaching it in a, in a similar way. Modes of presentation of the curriculum, they were looking for all kinds of ways. Uh, so that I'm not just talking gibberish. Uh, uh, an example might be found in the social studies approach to uh, ninth and 10th grade world history, where in previous years they had used more of a chronological um, approach, uh, shifted, got talking about how they could make it more meaningful to students and, and, uh, and really, um, uh, while still concentrating on content, um, spend a good deal more time on the process. And in order to do that, they shifted from a chronological uh, approach to a, 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 an approach that involved the great questions. What, what are the things that we really want students to be able to uh, think about, digest, and, and uh, answer, respond to? And uh, that took a lot of work and a total revamping uh, of the, uh, not so much the curriculum, because the content is still there, it's, uh, but the approach to it. They spent a lot of time uh, working and planning our theme for the year. As I mentioned, it was civility and respect and, and tolerance, and a great deal of that didn't happen by accident. A great deal of work went in in the summer <clears throat> in thinking about um, the uh, uh, how we were going to uh, attack that theme, what kinds of training were necessary for students and staff. Um, so that when we gathered in September, the concepts were already there and ready to, uh, to begin, and I think it, it paid off, and I'll return to that in a second. But we, uh, so the summer really, I think, set a very important and very positive tone. People were very eager to spend time in the summer developing uh, thoughts. If we move kind of uh, in parallel, uh, professional development was a, a big, uh, focus this year and how are we going to do that better? How are we going to use the additional time? And we decided to focus um, very heavily on departmental work. 
uh, we felt that departments had different needs uh, and could use the time differently within some guidelines. So a good deal of the professional development time, uh, both the full days and the uh, early releases, uh, rewriting curriculum and methods, as I already mentioned, had begun in the summer. They continued that work, uh, a lot of work on developing uh, new means of assessing what students were gaining from uh, uh, from the approaches that we were taking. And those uh, were represented a wide range uh, from trying to build a, 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 a basically a standardized test in the area of math uh, that we can use to determine whether uh, students leaving Algebra 2 have uh, mastered the material that would generally be uh, included in such things as the state learning results, college admissions, uh, or I'm sorry, college placement uh, for mathematics uh, tests, um, SATs, national standards, and that was a, a wonderful exercise. I think it took them much longer, uh, has taken them much longer than they thought it would in the beginning, but found it to be uh, a really interesting challenge and, and had all kinds of interesting discussions along the way, which were just as important as the final product. Th that's on one hand, and on the other hand, uh, 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 again, uh, social studies, uh, working with uh, developing a portfolio approach uh, in, in social studies, which they had um, not uh, had prior to that. So what I'm seeing uh, constantly is a much, much broader um, sense of what uh, assessment can mean. We have moved away from the traditional high school model. I think uh, elementary schools and middle schools have long uh, believed that there are other ways to, um, to understand what students have learned th than tests. Uh, and, but high schools traditionally have been slower to uh, move away from that notion. And what I see now is the full range of activities uh, that, and, and that in turn will benefit students because they will have many different ways of showing what they've learned and not just something that concentrates on a written response to a, a very closed question. Um, I think one of the, the great payoffs, uh, and I see it in almost every department, is the, the building of sense of department that has taken place. Um, each department ha has uh, benefited uh, tremendously from working together, and they've, they've come to uh, know one another uh, at a much deeper level and, and uh, can see the results of that. The, the, the discussions that take place within departments now are at a, a level that is entirely different. Uh, from what it was um, a few years back, I think. They're, they're really looking at important questions and talking about them constantly. A lunch, if you go into a lunch meeting, uh, there's great, great stuff going on. I um, want to return to assessment for a second. To uh, I did an item analysis of the MEAs that I would like to go into in some depth uh, tonight. Uh, <laughs> <the> <laughs> Uh, no, I would echo Tom and Nancy's uh, comments. We will be sending these out uh, tomorrow or uh, Thursday. We got bogged down in the other things that have been happening uh, in the school, but we will be sending out the, uh, the parental results. But the, uh, basically the results say to us that our students are continuing uh, to achieve at levels well above the state averages. We seem to be raising uh, our percentage of students that are either meeting or exceeding uh, the standards, and uh, our percentage of students who are not meeting the standards is dropping to uh, close to infinitesimal. Um, uh, obviously, continue, writing is an area where there has, has been some uh, very steady uh, improvement and growth over the three years, uh, so that our average, our, our uh, writing score this year, for example, uh, was well above uh, what it was two years ago, and each year it's, it's become uh, stronger. And the other areas were very close to the cumulative average for the three years, which is really a more helpful way to look at it. And, and I don't think, you know, if we, if we look at each year every time, we'll, we'll have our ups and downs and, and classes will perform better or worse uh, in given years. But when you look at the cum cumulative average, I think you see uh, the, uh, the trend. We will uh, need to continue to assess um, where we, you know, what we can do, uh, our, our health, um, averages are at the state average in the high school, um, and we need to look at that. That's not where we want to settle. 
and uh, see if there are things, are, are there, is there a pattern, are there types of material that we just aren't uh, able to find time to uh, bring to a student um, in a one semester uh, requirement. But in general, the MEAs uh, are, are uh, very similar to what they've been in the past. Uh, I think uh, I feel very good about the work that we did on our theme for the year. Um, both in terms of the content, but I think what I'm going to address uh, here are more the outcomes um, that, ha that, will be, um, that will be transferred, I think, to any other challenge that the high school faces. Uh, a lot of people did really good work in uh, developing uh, faculty training. We brought in Steve Wessler, and, and uh, he worked with the faculty and then worked with students. The student leadership uh, initiative, um, I think, uh, will pay off for years to come. Um, a substantial percentage of the high school students now have had uh, either facilitator or leadership uh, training and have, by doing so have indicated their willingness to take a step forward, take a risk, and, uh, uh, and speak out for, uh, for positive themes. And then the development of the roundtable uh, format uh, for discussion of this year's particular theme is a, is a format that I think we could use in the coming years to develop anything uh, that is a challenge to the high school that we feel uh, we need to have everybody working together uh, to, to address. And I, I think it's a, a format that shows tremendous promise, promise and will also um, almost perpetuate uh, the, the need for continued uh, wide uh, student leadership and uh, would want to uh, mention, I believe I have in the past, and if I didn't, I, I was uh, derelict, uh, but uh, Belinda Snell and Katie Lisa in particular have put in a tremendous amount of uh, work to make this program, uh, this whole approach uh, fly. Uh, this was our first year of the extended senior privilege, and I think it uh, was, uh, after the first two weeks, uh, a very successful experiment. Uh, we plan on continuing it. Um, the, uh, the students, again, that was a, maybe a good example of students living up to the trust that was uh, put in them. Uh, the flaws were minor. The senior transition project was in its second year, very successful. We learned once again that those students who had the most rewarding experiences were the ones that had put in some time thinking about what they really wanted to do and accomplish, and those that tended to have the unsatisfactory experiences uh, were those that w you know had not put in time and, and were willing to grab at anything at the last minute, and, and sometimes those didn't work as well. But overwhelmingly, listening to the students and their presentations and reading their journals, my feeling is that this is a uh, project that we probably need to fine tune but uh, continue with. Uh, we will be meeting later this week, the, the senior transition project team will be meeting uh, to go over uh, what we learned this year and get a, get a sense of what we need to change. <clears throat> um, I think the, our effort to continue to support the needs of all students has, has been successful and, and, uh, and we are continuing to fine tune it. The first year of the uh, Ed Skills program for students uh, who, were, uh, not did, who did not have IEPs uh, has been very successful um, and we've begun realizing that there is a, uh, almost a profile of student that it works best for. And so we're starting to, to uh, try to address that and, and um, make sure that students that, uh, that are in that profile uh, have the opportunity to get that kind of support. Um, we've also uh, met and fine-tuned the process of referrals. One, one of the glitches that we had is we tended to see it as a cure-all for everybody that was having a little bit of difficulty with a, a course or two, and uh, uh, we got so excited about it that we, you know, uh, just um, would say, oh, okay, let's put him in uh, at skills with Mr. Robinson, and, and uh, uh, it got to be, uh, the numbers got to be larger than they really should be with, uh, with that kind of course. But uh, again, well worth continuing. Uh, it also, uh, the process of continuing to look at our approaches in the regular ed classrooms uh, has continued and, and some new suggestions and new approaches, uh, most notably in the science department, uh, of meeting the needs of all students are going to be uh, moving, moving forward. Uh, the survey that I handed out, the, we had great uh, support from the Parents Association and 
before even starting, I want to thank uh, Bob Anastasov and Karen Palin, who were uh, two members of the Parents Association that put tremendous amount of work into uh, developing, sitting down with Dwight Ely and developing the survey and helping to collate results and so forth. What you have in your hands is a summary of the results. Uh, teachers and departments will, will receive this, but they will also receive more specific information about the results that, uh, that involve their uh, departments, all kinds of specific comments and so forth. The only editing that we did uh, with that was those comments that were made that would not be helpful in any way. Um, we uh, edited, we didn't delete them and say there weren't any comments, but we, we would uh, soften maybe the, the language to uh, make it uh, a statement that could be heard and, and seen rather than just, you know, reacted uh, to. Uh. But I would uh, direct you uh, to page 11, and all that, uh, all that I'm going to do is, uh, for tonight is, is talk, uh, uh, just run you through the summary of conclusions and recommendations. Um, we, uh, we, we think that we learned uh, that Cape Elizabeth has done a, a good job preparing students for life after high school. Uh, that uh, the students feel that we are offering a challenging curriculum and they overwhelmingly feel that they are studying that curriculum in a safe and comfortable environment. Uh, and uh, time and again stressed that they felt that the faculty uh, that they were working with were people who were very helpful, concerned with them as an individual. Um, that our students are doing well in college with an average, uh, and this, again, this is self-reported, so uh, there, there could be uh, inaccuracies, but uh, by what we were able to gain with an average GPA of over 3.0, a dropout rate and transfer rate very significantly below the national averages uh, for those two uh, rates. That the computer and library resources at CAPE are good, if not the state of the art, and particularly gratifying for us was to see that there were, uh, and you'll see this in the body of the report, significant differences, especially in the area in their rating of technology from year to year. Um, and I, I think that you as a board would be able to say there, even students are noticing the differences as we have uh, funded uh, the, uh, the uh, improvements in technology uh, at, at a very strong level over the years. You see a steady improvement as you look through the results from the class of 97, 98, uh, 99, 96, 97, 98, 99. No, I'm sorry, 97, 98, 99, 2000, uh, with the last results being uh, miles apart from the first and much more positive and so I think that our concentration is paying off and students are starting to see it as being uh, uh, definitely pretty good and, and leaning more towards moving towards the state of the art type of thing. And that the, the student reports that the academic expectations at the high school as well as the grading standards were about right in their, uh, in their estimation. Uh, there were a quarter of more, 25% uh, or more of our graduates had concerns in the following areas and made recommendations that may be summarized as follows. That homework is not meaningful, that there needs to be more flexibility in scheduling classes, and that there needs to be more variety in course offerings and preferably more AP offerings, advanced placement. Um, the homework comment is uh, one that I think all schools uh, deal with and we need to also uh, constantly looking at our homework. Homework is traditionally the uh, maybe the weakest point of a lesson plan, um, and I think we need to constantly analyze it to make sure that it's meaningful uh, and students understand that it's meaningful. Um, the flexibility in scheduling classes, I think we have done with the change in, in the schedule, I think we are doing uh, much better in terms of meeting the, the needs of students uh, in, in that area. We still have a few. Um, the one that has uh, you know, an impact on future board consideration is the last one, that there needs to be more variety in course offerings and, and preferably more advanced placement offerings. Um, those have budgetary implications, obviously. Uh, right now, uh, what we would need to do to broaden uh, offerings would be to eliminate uh, some, uh, some traditional sections and, uh, or add staff uh, to be able to do that, and that obviously would have budgetary implications. I think we do a good job for a school of our size I think our students are ready for more and would like more, uh, and it's a challenge to see if we can try to provide that. And then there are some recommendations for future surveys, uh, that, that more questions and probably more open-ended questions be asked of students regarding their preparation for life after Cape Elizabeth, uh, library and technology resources, special education services, 
and the types of methods of assessment that they found uh, in, in college. Um, I hope you have an opportunity to take a, a uh, look at this. The, the, the value is uh, to us, I think, immediate, but uh, one, of, one of the uh, things that we will certainly be doing is using this as our baseline and continuing on with this uh, type of survey, continuing uh, with uh, the, the approach that we used, in improving the, the instrument itself. Uh, and use this as our baseline to be able to say, okay, how are we doing? I think the title is, uh, is very, it, it captures the reason that we're doing this. It's not to pat ourselves on the back, it's to ask ourselves, how are we doing and what, what can we do better? And again, Dwight um, and uh, Dwight Ely, Bob Anastasoff, and Karen Palin uh, did a wonderful job in gathering this information, and our students took it seriously, and I think that's a measure of their feeling towards Cape Elizabeth High School, is that uh, they took it seriously and took a lot of time to add comments and, and that type of thing. It was, that was great to see. Um, finally, uh, I do want to get into some, some thank yous. Um, this four years has been, uh, for me, uh, a, a wonderful, wonderful experience. Um, I've had the opportunity to work with uh, probably the best faculty that I've worked with, and I think it's as strong or stronger today uh, as, as it was uh, uh, four years ago. We've had significant turnover, and yet I believe that we have filled those positions uh, extremely well and maintained the, the quality of the program. Uh, it's a faculty that has tremendous balance between uh, and I might add, uh, unusual balance uh, for other public high schools in the state of Maine uh, between uh, levels of experience, uh, levels of expertise, and so forth. Uh, it's, 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 I think, a very strong um, faculty. And when I've talked with uh, the person who I believe will be confirmed tonight as next year's uh, principal, I've been able to say to him uh, that I feel very good about uh, the faculty that he's going to be working with. Uh, I've had uh, an opportunity to work with uh, a, a tremendous administrative team that uh, has provided no end of uh, support and, and laughter and, and uh, ideas and, and creativity. Uh, that's been really important. I uh, uh, can't say enough about the professionalism of, uh, and the collegiality of that group. Um, Working with Tom as a superintendent uh, makes uh, leaving extremely difficult. It's, uh, you don't always get to work with somebody that, that you know that you can go to and say, you know, I've just really made a mess of this situation and I need to talk with you about it and, and know that it's not going to come back and uh, be used against you uh, two weeks later or anything like that. I trust Tom absolutely and, and have enjoyed the opportunity to work with him. Um, working with Dwight Ely uh, has made my four years um, enjoyable. Uh, every day is a learning experience. Uh, he is not only now, is not only a professional colleague, but a close friend, and I uh, will miss him uh, tremendously. I, I just have enjoyed working with him. No end. And then finally, uh, and not least, uh, you as a board, I think, um, are, have been uh, supportive, inquisitive, creative, thoughtful, caring, um, and articulate and uh, I don't think you can be topped, and uh, I uh, have appreciated all of your support over the, the four years. Um, le le leaving um, a community like this is um, dreadfully hard, and uh, I will repeat to you what I have repeated to the students a couple of different times and, and to the faculty. Um, I'm not hoping to find anything better in Tel Aviv. I am knowing that I will find something very different. Um, but I have no illusions that I will be finding a parent community, faculty, uh, student body, administrative colleagues, and board that is uh, near the equal of this one. And I've appreciated the opportunity to work with all of you. Thank you. Uh, open for questions. Thanks so much, Pete. That, um, uh, comments from board members? Questions for Pete? Well, I have one question on this. Um, is this something that can be continued in this format? You sort of alluded to changing 
format. I, I think that the format in general will stay the same, but we want to, as was mentioned on that last page, change some of the questions, uh, add some emphases uh, to a few areas that we don't think we, that we really got what we wanted. Uh, there were a few areas where we, um, you know, we looked at the results and, and we said, well, you know, the, the way we asked the question, what did we expect to get? Uh, you know, of course, this, uh, uh, you know, this is going to be, you know, so we need to modify the way that we ask the questions, uh, provide some opportunities for some open-ended responses. But in general, I think the format, we'll, we want to keep it so that it's comparable, so that we can look at the data and say, ah, yes, okay, we, uh, you know, in the first year that we did this, this is what we found out, and now we're, we seem to be moving in the, in the right direction. But uh, the format would be uh, a, uh, a random, uh, survey, very similar questions, trying to get at uh, the, the full array of, uh, uh, of areas, I guess, that, that we did in this one. I, is it likely that someone's going to pick this up and continue with it? Yes. Uh, I know that the Parents Association is, uh, is very interested in it, and I will be uh, talking with uh, the new principal uh, about it. And I, yes, I, I uh, think that uh, it will be. Uh, I'll be recommending very strongly that it be uh, continued. You can and just I, do it from Tel Aviv, right? I'm sorry? You can just do it from Tel Aviv. Right. <laughs> I, also, I, I want to emphasize that my role in the... It's part of the future direction plan. Oh. It, exactly. That'll be part of the report card. It's, uh, uh, so, it, yeah, it's an, an important part of, of that process. One, once we st started this uh, and we started seeing the types of information we were getting, it was a natural to say, oh, wait, this is going to be an important piece of our report card. What are our students saying about all kinds of things? <coughs> Pete, I know that um, the board has been invited to, uh, to join in. So this is a little secret, isn't it? The 20th? <laughs> is it? Is it? Well, it was. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> I just thought, well, it could be a secret, actually. Um, anyway, I was about to say, and I think I can still say, the board has been invited to, um, to join together on the 20th, and, and I'm sure I knew about people that. Will have an, <laughs> we'll have an opportunity to, um, you know, to, to speak with you and, and, uh, and, and talk with you before, um, before things wrap up for you. But certainly, um, we do appreciate your, your tremendous work, your tremendous dedication. <laughs> And, um, and we wish you the best of luck. And uh, uh, it, it's, um, uh, those uh, folks over there are very fortunate to, um, to be expecting your arrival. So Thank good you. luck to you. Thank you. George. Yes. Peter, um, you know, you can sit. <laughs> <laughs> no need to stand for me. I, fortunately and unfortunately, will be so far north, I hope to be seeing the northern lights <laughs> on the evening of your dinner. Uh, having taught in Austria and going to Israel, you must know what a mensch is. <laughs> so you know what I'm thinking about you. Uh, there's one thing that's always impressed me, Pete, and that is your care and concern about the kids in that building. Um, and I've always appreciated it. You've done a super job. You've changed the climate in that place. We've got, we've got a lot to, lot to go, but it's been a pleasure. It really has been a pleasure. And your extraction code is Bravo 3504 Alpha Alpha. Clement has assured me that he will be first over there with the airborne to get The need arises. Good luck. Thanks. Okay, we're going to move on to uh, committee reports, and we're going to start with the finance subcommittee from earlier this evening. Finance. We had a busy evening over a relatively short period of time. Um, the first thing we did was sign warrants. I'm, st I'm not sure if they're still signed you know, or if they've been signed yet. I hope they're making their way around tonight. Um, then we got into some actual business. Um, <coughs> Finance Committee authorized the use of $6,000 in building rental funds to buy folding tables uh, to the tune of roughly $1,500 and the balance for custodial help to get the schools ready for September. As reported several times during uh, the winter season, we knew that we were going to be killed by energy costs this year. That, uh, Despite having budgeted for increases, we had, didn't budget enough. 
um, to the tune of $77,000. So we have authorized the, uh, the transfer of funds from contingency uh, to take care of that $77,000. We're engaged in a project with Central Maine Power where we have uh, changed, this is just informational uh, type of lighting that we're using and uh, we're going to be getting roughly $1,866 in incentive compensation. Uh, a little good news in terms of, uh, of state funding for 2001-2002. We were notified oh, about 10 days ago that the number of people working together were able to uh, reduce our reduction by $52,000. So rather than 90 some odd thousand, we're down to a cut over the prior year in state funding of about 40, 40 some odd thousand. Uh, a little more palatable, um, but I would expect that each year from now on, we're going to go forward facing large um, threatened cuts in state funding for us and uh, we're going to have to put through the same kind of efforts that we did this year and uh, try and get those reduced but uh, I do think they are going to be happening. Salaries and benefits for non-classified employees we have uh, the, the committee voted to approve the increases recommended by the negotiators I believe that's pretty much it. Um, the uh, only other item was the, uh, the appropriation report. And I suppose I should put into the record that the people in the non-classified employees that we are talking about are the superintendent, the business manager, uh, central office staff, um, Food Service Director, Transportation Secretary, Technology Technician, Custodial Secretary, Occupational Therapist, School Psychologist. So I think uh, that's it. Uh, considerable amount of business for finance for one night. Sure was. Um, that's why we were late. Moving on to the policy subcommittee, Jennifer. Um, policy. The uh, committee met yesterday and um, we've decided in our discussions on uh, athletics to establish an athletic advisory committee uh, to be made up of uh, the superintendent, the athletic director, coaches, students, and school board members. And this committee will address uh, many of the issues that we've discussed and uh, hopefully recommend some specific policies to the board. That's okay. Um, facilities committee, Marie? The planning committee. Planning committee. Yes. We met um, last week to just kind of summarize um, what had transpired since the budget. And so um, we will be putting together the accurate numbers of, of what happened on all of those sheets, as you remember, that we presented to the school board. Right. Um, and the decision that we did make, actually, was that we would like to keep all of the same members on this committee into the next school year. Since this is such a new thing, we'd like to keep it just for the first year, for the next several meetings, and then we would alternate um, or, you know, switch off people. Um, but that's basically it. There wasn't really a lot of work to do, and it, we just talked about how we will change or do things um, for the next February, next February when we do it. Good. Um, we're going to uh, follow the agenda here. Unfinished business, I don't believe that there is any. Um, so we're going to move on to new business, and we'll start with uh, consideration of the superintendent's nomination to high school principal. Um, what I'd like to do is uh, to give, um, for those people who were not involved with the process and most of the, the, the board was, just a brief history of uh, the education and work experience of the candidate who was Jeffrey Shedd um, to take on the role um, as principal as of July 1 of Cape Elizabeth High School. Uh, Mr. Shedd has an undergraduate degree uh, from Williams College. 
He also has a um, law degree from Boston University School of Law. Um, he then um, ventured into the area of education and attended the University of Southern Maine in the Teacher for Secondary Schools program and also the Boston University School of Education and obtained a master's degree in educational leadership from the University of Southern Maine. His work experience uh, began outside of the field of education as an attorney for the firm of Bernstein, Schur, Sawyer, and Nelson in Portland, and then after working there for six years, uh, decided on a career change into the field of education, where he was first a history teacher at Mount Ararat High School. At that same, in that same school system at Mount Ararat High School, he became the department chair in history, and then became the assistant principal uh, where he served in that position for four years at uh, Mount Ararat. Uh, most recently, he has been the principal of Morse High School in Bath, a school of about 800 students. Um, and he was the uh, overwhelming, um, it was the overwhelming decision of the interview team and all those involved that he would be the person to nominate uh, as the next principal of Cape Elizabeth High School. Okay. So we need a motion. Jim? Um, I think aside from the candidate and Tom, uh, I wound up being the only person present uh, all the way through the application screening and interview process. And uh, if I could intro my, my uh, motion, motion uh, I'd just like to share with you a paragraph of a letter that I wrote to Jeff when I found out that he ex had accepted our, our offer. Uh, keep in mind, this is to Jeff. Uh, you have no doubt heard that many people, myself included, felt a great deal of trepidation following news of Pete Dawson's coming departure from Cape Elizabeth High School. He's been an immensely popular and effective leader. That said, these past few weeks have afforded me the pleasure of witnessing and participating in the very methodical and total dismantling of that apprehension, thanks to you. You are the right person for our job, and I'm very confident that our job will suit your own personal, uh, own needs for personal fulfillment and professional uh, growth, not to mention proximity to family. Uh, in that spirit, uh, feeling that he is definitely the right person for the job, I would uh, recommend that we uh, support the superintendent's nomination for principal. Okay. Thanks, Jim. Second, Jennifer. Questions or comments? And seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. We're going to move on to um, nominations to teaching positions for 2001 and to 2, 2001. We've been um, very busy in the schools trying to complete as much of the hiring for positions that were open in the schools. Um, the first position that I placed in nomination is a one-year position, grades five through eight, classroom music teacher at the middle school, and that is Michelle Janice. Okay, we're gonna, um, we need to go through these one by one. Um, I need a motion in terms of Michelle Janice. Jim? I move that we support the nomination of uh, Michelle Janice. Okay, you second. Susan, thank you. Any questions or comments with the resume and the, I love these um, candidate recommendation sheets. They just really, from the schools, they just make it really nice for us to get a synopsis and then we can look at the resume. So thanks for doing these. Um, comments or questions? And seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. Um, the next position is a .5 kindergarten position, um, Pond Cove School, and the candidate nominated is Holly Hertel. Mm -hmm. We need to nominate uh, a motion in terms of Holly Hertel. Kevin? <laughs> Certainly. I move that we accept the nomination. Everybody's reading, so I'm kind of picking Holly, people. Holly Hertel. Okay. And second? Jennifer, thanks. Yeah, I don't um, do them because I can't see it out. I can only second. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all those in favor? 7-0. The next position is a social worker position, district-wide, William, and I probably will mispronounce this name. Cook. C Cook? Cook. Cook. Red top. K-O-E-C-K. Okay, we need, we, a, <laughs> we need a motion, Kevin. Thank I you. move that we, <laughs> William we Cook. accept the nomination of William Cook as a full-time, uh, excuse me, not as a full-time, but as a social worker for the uh, district. Right. 
Um, thank you. So we need a second. Susan? Um, questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? It's 7 0. The next position is a sixth grade uh, math and social studies teacher, person who has been employed in uh, several positions and ed tech positions in the district, uh, Aaron Filio at Cape Elizabeth Middle School. Need a motion, Jennifer? <coughs> so moved. <laughs> I need a second on this. Susan, thank you. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7 0. The next is for a, an English teacher position, position at the high school, Sarah Gridley. Okay, we need a motion for Sarah Gridley. Jim? I would move that we support the nomination of Sarah Gridley for English teacher. Thank you. Set high school. We need a second. Susan? Um, questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7 0. Um, and the, the next position is for an occupational therapy, therapist district wide, and the candidate nominated is Denise Sullivan. I need a motion for Denise Sullivan's recommendation. Kevin? I move we accept the nomination of Denise Sullivan as a, uh, as a district wide occupational therapist. Thank you. A second? Elaine? Um, any questions, comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. Now move on to two teachers who are transferring from part to full time. And if you recall, these positions were included in the budget and um, due to the increase in instructional support and um, in the bubble that is at the middle school and the increase enrollment there to increase the world language. And that world language position to go to full time would be uh, Susan Dana and the instructional support is Mary Smaha. So what we need is a motion uh, to approve the superintendent's recommendation to move <coughs> um, Susan Dana and Mary Smaha from part to full time. So moved. So moved, Jennifer, <laughs> thank you. A second? Um, Susan, thanks. Any questions or comments? And seeing none, all those in favor? Seven zero. We move on to. Um, Excuse me, George. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, did you forget? Did I miss? One? No, that one. No. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Not to be yet. Are we? What, are we uh, am I? Am I missing something there? No. No. Um, no, that wasn't. That we're going to move on now to um, the athletic V positions, and this is for the fall 2001. And we have uh, several returning. Uh, high school and middle school coaches and one new coaching nomination. So I will um, read through the entire list. Um, Andy Strout, Varsity Boys Soccer, Ben Raymond, JV Boys Soccer, Charlie Carroll, Varsity Girls Soccer, Larry Greer, Boys Cross Country, Marianne Doss, Girls Cross Country, Paul Jackson, Golf, Mickey Maher, Football. Uh, returning middle school coaches, Joe Doan, cross country, Jerry McQuinney, assistant cross country, and Susan Ray, tennis. And one new coaching nomination, Lori Broadhurst, JV Girls Field Hockey. Okay. Um, I need a, uh, a motion to accept the superintendent's nominations um, on these athletic fee positions. Jim? I move that we support the superintendent's nominations for, for, for our coaching positions okay. as read. Thanks. Second? Elaine? Um, questions or comments? And seeing none, all those in favor? 7 0. We'll move on to fill co curricular positions for the 2001 2002 school year. Uh, there are a, a significant number of, of positions. Um, you have all of them in front of you. Uh, I can read through them, or if you've already had a chance to go through them. Um, Has anyone not had a chance to go through these? There's a, there's a lot, um, and uh, we've had them in the packet. So I think that what we can do, unless um, we just kind of open it up, if there's any questions or concerns around any of these. The ones that aren't filled, those we'll just do in the fall. And as they, they come, come forward, you'll get them, yes. Right. Um, so no concerns then. Why don't we um, make the motion, Kevin? I move that we accept the nominations for co-curricular fee positions as enumerated in the various lists provided to us. Good. 
Um, a second? Susan, thanks. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. We now have a consideration for approval of a negotiated um, Education Technician 3 contract. Kevin, you want to put that yes, forward? Yes, I move that we adopt the salary schedule, Article 13 uh, for EdTech 3s, the salary schedule uh, as negotiated by members of this board and the Cape Elizabeth Education Association negotiating team. Okay, and um, I need a second on that. Jennifer, and any comments or questions? These have been reviewed also. Was there a question? Okay. Um, seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. And uh, we we'll now move on to consideration of adoption of the five-year future direction plan uh, for Cape Elizabeth schools, also the, the final uh, document in the packet. Um, as most of you have been very involved with this process, um, the one thing I did want to make clear um, is that each year this will be reviewed. Um, obviously, um, we will all of it will have to fit into the, the budgetary recommendations as they come up. Um, although some of these recommendations for year two, year three, and year four um, have potential, uh, would have potential impact on the budget, um, it would have to go through this, the same process as any, any budget recommendation. So just because it's in here doesn't mean that it's automatically going to happen. It has to go through that process. Um, I just wanted to make that, that clear, but that, that question did come up. Okay. Um, what we need is a motion for approval of the five-year plan, um, understanding the condition that Tom has just put forward in terms of um, each of these things. This in no way um, can um, bypass the normal budget process. Um, but clearly, um, the product that's been produced here is um, a product that we put great stock in, um, we've made a tremendous investment in, and um, will clearly have um, and drive um, the development of uh, future budgets. Uh, so I need a motion. Susan. I move that we, um, we vote to support the Cape Elizabeth School's future direction plan as presented tonight. Very good, thanks. A second, Marie. And any comments or questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Seven zero, and we sort of do this very happily. Although from my tone, it doesn't sound happy because I'm moving <laughs> through this stuff fairly quickly. Um, each year, we um, have a, a, a situation where some are hiring. Um, we basically um, authorize Tom um, as superintendent of schools to, um, to do the authorization of summer hiring to make commitments so that we don't uh, create situations where people are waiting f on us um, for final approval. So we basically uh, put, uh, give him the authority to make those commitments. And, um, but that does require a motion from the board and approval by the board. Kevin. I move whatever I said last year. <laughs> uh, okay. uh, if that doesn't Can't quite get that sloppy okay. about it. Well, okay. In that case, I move that we authorize the superintendent to hire teachers and other staff as necessary uh, during the summer period. Okay. Um, thank you. Second, Susan. Um, questions or comments about this? That's what he said last year. It is. <laughs> Ditto. Okay. It was something um, like that. All, um, all those in favor? S seven zero. Um, we have in your packet a request from a teacher for a two-week unpaid leave in February in conjunction with, I believe, a sabbatical of a spouse. And um, you've had a chance to take a look at that, it, and I need a motion on that. And this is, Tom, you're approving? Yes. You're recommending approval of this. Um, so we need a motion in terms of the superintendent's recommendation for approval of a two-week unpaid leave of absence for a teacher as per the the request. Jennifer. I can do this. I vote we approve a request from a teacher for two weeks unpaid leave in February of 2015. Thank you. Um, and we need a second. Susan. 
And any questions or comments? Yeah. Yes. Um, she won't actually need two weeks, will she? Or will she? I mean, it's just for. We have I think those it's two, two weeks of the two weeks of the of the academic year. She will be. She's going to be gone three weeks. She'll be gone so, three. So it'll be three weeks, but one of the weeks is the February break. But we have two extra days oh, in oh, February. Teacher work. Oh, but those are teacher work. Okay. 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 So there's still work days. Yeah. Right. So it's up up to two weeks. Two weeks. Um, Yes. Um, given these circumstances, I have no problem supporting this request. I think this is an area, though, that we have to be pretty careful um, from a precedent setting uh, standpoint. Uh, I, granted, we have to look at every case individually and the circumstances, and I, again, I have no problem with this one, but I think it's an area where we should be really careful. Otherwise, we might be creating a situation where we get people looking for vacations during school, and right, I don't right. think that's something we want to get into. Right. I, I think that's a, a good caution, Jim. Um, any other comments, questions? Kevin. Just that uh, it's sort of a misnomer to call this an unpaid leave because we will be paying a substitute. I, I do support this, and, but I also agree with Jim that we have to be, uh, be careful because this does not come at, as, as a free of charge item to the school department. Mm -hmm. Right. But she wouldn't be paying paid. Right? She wouldn't, but we would be paying a substitute. Right, but it's, mm, it's I, not a double. Okay. No, no, but it's, it's not free. Right. Okay, other questions or comments on this? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. Consideration of um, proposal for an extended athletic trip. Um, this is the soccer trip? This has been a, from what I understand, it, I know it took place last year, a yearly event. Um, several communities that have been involved with this, and this year's trip is to... Um, Cromwell, Connecticut, where I was an assistant principal and a teacher for nine years. Mm. So you Good. can have people report back on behavior <laughs> and stuff. Mm. <laughs> okay. Um, when I was here, they were horrible back then. But it's pretty good now. <laughs> um, I need a, um, a, a motion in terms of appro approving um, this uh, request for an extended athletic trip for the soccer team. Kevin. So moved. So moved, and I need a second, Jim. Um, questions or comments? Again, all this being in your packet, all those in favor? 7-0. Um, consideration of a request regarding a student trip to Europe in April. We basically um, entertain that. Um, and consideration of request for extended field trips um, also entertained, and uh, action will be deferred until February. Um, I'm sorry. I don't know why I said February. February. Oh, the trip is because I, I read February somewhere, I guess, um, until September. Uh, that concludes that piece of our business, and um, I think at this point, uh, before we uh, have, um, before we consider the request of uh, the superintendent to uh, enter into an executive session, um, this is the opportunity that um, that the board takes to briefly sort of reflect on, on the year um, in what is becoming a bit of a tradition. So I would uh, open it up um, to just that. Jim. Um, this past year, I think I've been stuck uh, by the fact that above all the issues and the policies and the plans and the budgets and the books and the buildings, uh, what we're actually all about in this district is people. And I don't think you have to stretch uh, dictionary definitions too far uh, to understand that we're a family. Um, we have triumphs and trials that we all share together, just like families do. Um, I shared everybody else's heartbreak at Hobbs Funeral Home last summer. In December, I sat incredulous as Mike Layton literally scampered to the top of the climbing wall in the high school gym. On January 15th, school bus driver Charlie Thompson became a hero in my eyes as he skillfully avoided disaster with a bus containing my son and his high school uh, hockey teammates. I had a blast again this year uh, in, high school, in uh, college buddy Linda Paul's kindergarten class, sharing some Dr. Seuss with the kids, listening gloves and all, Tom. Um, I watched quite possibly one of the greatest schoolboy trombonists ever to play in the state of Maine uh, in Chris Gagne, who was uh, lives practically next door to me. Uh, I've seen childhood friend John Casey assume a leadership role in determining where this district will go in the coming years. 
Uh, during a school board visit to Paz, I smiled when I saw Paul Sandberg smile, and then we shared a robust handshake, as family members often do. I sat in on three positive action team meetings, sharing the worry and concern of, all the, uh, of some other families in our larger family, hoping that they would somehow be able to get past their respective bumps in the road. Middle school principal Nancy Hutton always asks my oldest son, Andy, uh, who hasn't been part of her school for five or six years. Uh, family members do that, Nancy. I shared Tom Eismeyer's fun as we all sat here and listened to third grader Jeremy Almendinger uh, very eloquently recount his day as principal of Pond Cove School. And I, lastly, I had a chance to be a part of a process uh, that has just uh, brought a, a new member to our family, uh, new principal Jeff Shedd. I look forward to his con contributions very much. And with very mixed emotions, I watch as two very special members of our family move on, uh, Marla Bono and Pete. Happy for both of you, uh, but sad because we'll all miss you. Um, you know, I could go on and on talking about the pride that I feel in our family and how fortunate I feel to be part of this board, uh, that we all seem to be pulling together, uh, maybe like we never have before. And I truly like our chances of, of making our very idealistic vision become a reality. Very nice. Thanks, Tim. We maybe should have had you go laugh. Yeah. <laughs> Who's going to follow None that? of the rest of us want to go now. <laughs> you can go now. Wait for the rest of us. It won't be too long. Just take a vote. Okay. Um, that, no, seriously, that was very nice. You, he is the writer on the board. And, um, and, and does a tremendous job. Um, other board members? I don't really think we, I mean, what else could we say after that? You could Honestly. say something. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like piddly a down here. <laughs> <laughs> All set? I would just like Lane. to. Uh, reflect a little bit um, as a first year a school board member and, and um, say that I felt very lucky to, to come on board at a time when we had a, a solid and strong uh, school system going and felt lucky that we could be proactive and I can be a part of some of the initiatives that have started. Um, and I just wanted to say that I've um, enjoyed working with um, the administrators and the teachers, um, the kids and uh, the school board. I really look forward to making a difference in the next couple of years. Great, thank you. Susan? Um, also as a rookie, I, I would just like to say um, that as I was leaving work tonight, there's a sign on our wall that says, children are such a great way to start people. And when I came here, I kind of felt that we all had the same sense of purpose in mind. But um, after, when I came here in September, or maybe even a year ago, um, but, but it's not sense of purpose. The things that come to mind now are um, creativity, humor, um, fierce dedication. That's, that's what I have sensed, and that's what I've had the opportunity to be a part of this year, and it really tremendously exceeded my expectations. Um, and to use some of the words that Pete used tonight, um, I've been impressed with, very gratified by, and very proud of the work that we've done as individuals and as a group. And, and I just feel that oh, I'm convinced there's nothing that is impossible with this group behind it. And I'm just so glad to have the opportunity to be part of it. So thank you. Very nice. Thanks, Susan. Kevin? Well, sitting here listening to people talk about, you know, the new kids on the block, and I realized that in very short four years, I've become next to George, the old timer to group. He means in terms of. You know what he's talking about. Well, you know, it's it's interesting. Four years, um, and I'm looking back four years ago, and I was not a very happy puppy. Um, and I certainly came on this board with some agendas to be addressed, including improving relationships between the board and teachers and administrators and a lot of other things. And what I found is that over the last four years, I've become part of a process. 
And when all is said and done, I can't personally take credit for anything that's happened that's positive. But I look around at my fellow board members, I look around at the administrators who are here at every board meeting, the teachers and everything else, and I say to myself, we collaboratively have moved this system ahead so far in four years that I actually see some opportunity in the next few years to capitalize on those opportunities and to actually make meaningful change. From little things like taking care of the neediest of our kids who are having trouble learning but aren't special ed, to big things, um, uh, you know, making sure that we have the right courses and everything else and we've, we've unified the curriculum and done a five, we're working on a five year plan. Four years ago, I wouldn't have expected any of that to happen. And I am just, I am pleased and proud and happy to be part of this group, this community. Uh, and that's uh, just my reflection for the year. Okay, thank you, Kevin. Others? Tom, did you? Well, I think just my few comments would be um, in the two years that I've been here, um, I see that I, I agree with everyone, except that I, that I truly believe and, and agree with what Jim has said, the strength is in the people. Um, from the school board to the staff, um, it's the people in the organization that, that make that learning happen. It's what goes on in our individual classrooms. And the spirit of the organization that I see happening right now is just, it's just amazing. It's unlike um, anything I've been involved with. And I've mentioned that I know to a couple of board members that I really think were on the verge of really doing some, some wonderful things. And the end result will be improved learning for all of our students. But that capability is, is there, and I think we're going to see even better things happen over the next few years. Okay, thanks. Um, I just had a couple of things. As I reflected back, I really think there's, and, and you, so many people have covered so many things because there are really many reasons um, and things, uh, good causes for celebration. Uh, but I figured I would just pick a couple because um, others would, would cover many of, of the same things perhaps. I think that it's been particularly um, extraordinary this year in terms of recognition of staff accomplishments. I think we, um, I, I think the, the recognition piece um, the accomplishments in terms of our staff um, ha have been, have been um, identified at, at the local level, at the state level, at the national level, and we've celebrated those. And it seems to me that we've had just a tremendous amount of those celebrations. And I think it's really indicative and representative of the quality of, of the folks that we have um, all um, working as part of this um, school community. And then the things that I like to focus on are more the organizational um, pieces that I kind of get excited about. And I think that um, there's been this year a, a bit of an evolution and coming of age of a um, standing uh, planning subcommittee that somehow seemed to make sense a couple of years ago and, and then went through its, uh, its um, evolving and has really played a big part um, in terms of the big gains that I think that we've made in continuously re refining our budget process. I just really feel that we've got so much a better handle on that. Um, and I guess the, the third piece was really um, a tremendous amount of work that was done by a number of people um, across all the different um, uh, pieces of the school community and that having to do with the facilities planning. I think what happened, what that group did was they took some very complicated issues, things that can be very emotional because it involves a lot of money. They studied the history, they got their facts straight, and they were able to present a realistic, very reasonable, uh, very rational proposal that just makes a whole lot of sense and is basically an excellent plan. So those are, and again, I could go on and on, but I'm not gonna do that. I think those are certainly all things that are very representative of the kind of um, uh, very positive things that have happened, the, 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 um, the more than incremental uh, positive improvements that have been made. And they all have to do with people working really hard and being dedicated, so um, we certainly appreciate that. And we certainly look forward um, to next year um, and being able 
uh, next year at this time to talk about even more um, exciting and different and uh, wonderful accomplishments and, and things that are that are happening. So, um, in the event that anyone has anything else to say, that would be fine. And um, not seeing anyone jumping up, uh, what I do need is a motion uh, to enter executive session, um, and it's specifically to discuss the superintendent's evaluation, um, and that will happen immediately hereafter. So I need a motion for that. Jim? I move that we adjourn public session and move to executive session in order to discuss the superintendent's evaluation. Thanks. Um, second, Elaine. Um, and before we take that vote, just a couple of dates to remember. School board workshop meeting is on June 19th, um, 7 p.m. in the superintendent's office. Um, and our topic will be, again, the superintendent's evaluation, um, and that will be in the form of an executive session. Will there be any public part of that? No. We'll go right into executive session. Um, so that will be the June um, uh, workshop. <laughs> well, as he walks in. <laughs> <laughs> I can take care of the gauntlet. Yeah. Okay. Um, all those in favor, then, to enter executive session. That's 7-0. And thank you very much. Have a good evening. And we'll take a, we'll take, um, let's